in the design of integrated reading and writing, it's one of the key elements that I tried to keep in mind was the balanced approach to instruction. Because in the reading classroom, when we did them separately, we had a great deal of time to drill down on skills. And so many developmental students need that. And then, of course, you have to show them how to take that skill and transfer it into the whole process. But many of them have gaps where they really need a great deal of attention and repetitive learning. They just need that. They're trying to overcome a lifetime here of, of gaps. When we just had the reading classroom, we had the time to do that. Um, in the writing classroom, there was plenty of time to um, give them opportunities for revisions. Now when we bring them together, our greatest challenge is going to be how do we balance that need for the, the skill and drill, if you will, with the holistic approach of the process. And I think that's where our technology is a great advantage because we can come up with individualized learning plans based on diagnostic testing and we can identify on an individual basis what their specific needs are and then if we see that an entire class has these shared gaping holes then we can do whole group instruction but if we see that everybody's kind of in a different place in our classroom then we do have individualized adaptive technology that allows those students to drill down themselves underneath the guidance of the teacher never on by themselves, I mean they just can't be put over there by themselves. They have to have the feedback. They have to, they have to be held accountable for taking that and then applying it, transferring that skill to their own work. And that occurs then in the process, the phases of the process. So for example, if um, they have a great deficiency in grammar, then that student's probably going to spend more time on the proofreading and the revising phase of the, of the reading writing process where another student who doesn't have that difficulty but can't come up with topics or doesn't really understand how to engage with the text might be spending more time you know in the, the previewing and the brainstorming part of the, the process. So the process approach really does allow the flexibility for the balanced approach. We can't do it all one way and we can't do it all the other. We have to have a balanced approach. Well, they should take heart because they're already doing it. And all they really need to think about is how they can deepen or expand the use of writing. Reading teachers use writing to learn activities from the moment the students open a piece of text or engage in a piece of text. Um, they ask them to, um, the, uh, to, one of the most common is like the KWL, what do I know, what do I need to know or learn, and then at the end, what have I actually learned from this piece of writing. Um, they take notes, they record their questions, they record their answers, they annotate the text, um, they write summaries, they write book reports. Reading teachers are already incorporating writing in their curriculum. So they need to understand that and see that. I don't think that they, they actually see how much writing they actually do. Probably the new part for them that might make them a little uncomfortable is that it's not just writing to learn activities any longer, which seem to be more informal and more student-centered, like the I think, I got out of this text, I was confused about this, I think this is the most important idea. After they, when they get into that drafting, where a student has to draft a response, they're gonna have to show students how to move from the first person reader response into a more universal or third person mm -hmm. um, application. You know, so the pronoun in their writing would change from I to he or they or we, you know, or, or people. And that's a hard shift for developmental students to, to make. So that's probably the one thing that reading teachers would, um, would need to kind of take into consideration. That book report, instead of it just being a summary of the book, might be an analysis of why anybody should read this book. Mm -hmm. You know, why, what's the significance of this book and its contribution, or this particular article? Uh, maybe an audience analysis, who should, who should really know about this piece of information? Mm -hmm. 
if this information needed to be shared. So it's moving them outside of themselves mm -hmm. and into a more universal application. Mm -hmm. um, so it's moving from writing to learn into writing to share information you know, with a more global audience. I think they're going to find it is going to make their job so much easier. For so long, in particularly at the developmental level, we've taught these in separate classrooms. So we haven't really taught it in terms of, I don't mean to speak for everybody, maybe there are people out there who have already done this, but so many of us haven't taught it as a conversation. So in the writing classroom, most of the topics have been either provided to students, like here's a list of topics that you can choose from, or asking students to come up with a topic that interests them. And right away, that's where those students hit a writer's block. Their prior knowledge is sometimes so slim that they don't have a lot to tap into to come up with a really good topic. That problem is solved in the integrated reading and writing class because they will be reading about topics. They will be building their prior knowledge. They will be able to respond to ideas instead of having to just come up with them out of nothing, out of themselves. So in the long run, it's going to be, in the short run, it's going to really solve that problem in terms of finding topics that are worthy of development and um, able to be developed in ways in which are significant and substantial. First, by having, in, in, in the traditional way where we had the reading class in, in one classroom and then the writing class in another classroom, I don't think students were able to necessarily see how those two things really related to each other, how they were transferable skills. What you do as a reader, you also do as a writer, you just do it from a different perspective. So first of all, just bringing those into one classroom and making it a dialogue of text is going to, to enhance that skills transfer. But you've actually tapped on the very reason why I did include so many topics, a wide variety of topics from so many different disciplines, because we, we need to show students that these are behaviors that they can take into any academic or real life situation and improve their communication skills by transferring these skills into those situations. So having those, um, putting that kind of a situation in front of students, contextualized learning mm -hmm. is really what it is, and showing them that they can um, use the reading writing process, they can integrate it. Not only can they, they must. They must, for their own success, they must transfer these skills when they leave this classroom. And the biggest advocate for that is the teacher. Yeah. And, uh, and I always encourage my students to, to question the teacher. You know, like, well, how will this be used? So when they go into that next classroom, uh, what the first thing they need to be looking for is how reading and writing, what kind of a role reading and writing plays in that particular situation. Mm -hmm. When they're on the job, how can reading and writing help them get the job, keep the job, or rise in that company? Mm -hmm. And so really making it clear to students. I think the think aloud from the teacher, the classroom teacher, is really helpful in that area. Mm -hmm. I have a real heart for developmental students because I began as a developmental student. And um, so if, if, if I am um, an example of what developmental students go through, uh, the chaos of life outside of the classroom can become very overwhelming. All those demands can become very, very overwhelming. So to enter into the classroom and to try and, and absorb a whole new culture, a whole different culture, um, just becomes one more stressor. And for me anyway, so much of my barriers to success was figuring, trying to figure out how to manage the culture of a classroom. So what helped me and what I've always tried to provide my students is um, a strong awareness that there's more potential in the student than what that student sometimes shows. And that the te a teacher's faith in that student is probably the most important part of the learning experience. 
more important than the lesson plan, really. It's the humanity with which it's delivered. So uh, being able to use academic assignments and perhaps even the inability of a student to complete those assignments as a diagnostic tool mm -hmm. to give them then some recognition that there is a way to deal with this. You know, this might be a time management issue. This might be um, a, a low self-esteem issue. And all of our colleges have resources available that we can channel our students into once we understand that that might be their need. Now, we can't make them go. We can't make them take advantage of even our great teaching, but we can show them that they are not invisible and that their failure is not innate within them and that they can overcome. So I would say that the classroom teacher is probably the most key ingredient in addressing that culture of failure helping a student overcome the culture of failure.